Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. And welcome to worship. I'm so excited to see you here this evening. Um, I just have a couple of quick announcements. The first one is just a reminder that there isn't going to be a in-person worship here on Sunday this coming up. And uh, there will be services posted online um, on our website, on our Facebook page. And um, if you happen to have Marnie Elkhorn Cable TV, you should be able to find it there as well. So um, please be aware and alert for that. And if you see others that attend worship with us usually, um, if you would want to pass that information along, just a reminder to folks not to... Not to come on Sunday morning here in the church. You can watch and participate in worship in your jammies with your coffee on Sunday morning. Um, and then I wanted to share with you um, the family of Linda Mule. Linda passed away this, uh, this week, and her daughter Chris and son-in-law Steve are, are quite sad. They've been working trying to um, clean up her apartment and and prepare things there. And so they're not going to be making decisions about um, her funeral services and things like that uh, until after Christmas. But she was kind of leaning towards having a service perhaps on January 7th. So somewhere around that time is, is where she was leaning the last time I talked to uh, Linda's daughter. And so um, I'll be sure and give you more information as I receive it. But just know that um, Linda wanted everybody to know how much she absolutely loved you and loved this church and loved all the people in the community. And um, she, she was a wonderful lady and uh, she will be greatly missed. And so uh, please be in prayer for her daughter and son-in-law. Those are the announcements I have. Are there any others that we should know tonight? Okay, well then I will invite you to our Christmas dialogue and greeting. So if you want to respond in the bold print. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of only Son from the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a Son is given. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you. And also with you. We sing our first hymn, O Come, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
O God, you have made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that as we have known on earth the mysteries of that light, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I have some special music that we'd like to share with you. We have our quartet, including Bob Brockhoff, Annie and Nalen Clint, and Roman Willen.
Tonight's first reading is from Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of a tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garden rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. for 
what you guys would call town kids. Um, for us, that was just regular kids, <laughs> suburban kids. So throughout the worship, we could see and we could hear the animals making their various noises, and we could smell them too. <laughs> Never once did I stop and consider how much work it took to get that living nativity set up and established, and then later, that same night, taken down after the worship service was over. Now that I'm a, an adult, I am so grateful for the tremendous gift of that living nativity for Christmas Eve. Whoever was involved had to have been a dedicated um, and devoted person. They spent countless hours of time and effort and patience and love to make that happen every year. Just imagine all the little details involved to prepare for it. And I know some of you have livestock at home, so you know what I'm about to share. First order of business would be to protect the church and the animals and the excited children. So that means tarps, straw, fencing. It means some kind of a plan for loading the animals and securing them all in their various uh, cages and crates and on, on a trailer or on a truck or whatever. And then there was making sure that they had some kind of food and bedding, uh, buckets for water, extra straw bales, and lots of cleaning supplies. All that stuff to haul up to the church and then unload it and set it all up. Most importantly, there were a lot of people that were needed also to tend to the animals, to keep the animals um, and the excited children safe from each other during that live nativity event. And then the cleanup crew would have to tear it all down, reload the trailers, drive back to the farm, and then unload it. Now, does that sound exhausting? Yes, it sounds very exhausting. I know there's somebody back there uh, that knows all about what that would take. That is a tremendous amount of work to go into a Christmas Eve worship service. And the tradition is carried on to this day, and I've got to say, the addition of live animals brings Christmas Eve worship service to a whole nother level. <laughs> My friend Carla, pastor, um, she used to pastor a church in Dunlap, always found a way um, to get somebody from her area to host a, um, a Christmas worship service, not usually on Christmas Eve, but a, a Christmas worship service in their shed or their barn, just so that other people could have this living nativity experience. You see, there is something about the living and breathing the eating and the sleeping and the stinking and the messy animals that keep us grounded in the real world. When you smell the smells of that first Christmas in the barn or in a stable or in a church, you can't romanticize it and you can't turn it into some sort of sugary sweet story or a sappy Hallmark movie. I love those just as much as the rest of us, but you can't turn it into that. Pastor David Leninger believes that the Lord chose that specific location for Jesus' miraculous birth precisely because it was lousy. He says, I think the message was that God would be available to us even in the most putrid circumstances we could imagine. Those circumstances when we would normally feel that God would be a million miles away. What a great point. Jesus was born into a real world with real problems and real challenges, much like we face today. The people of Jesus' time experienced poverty and hunger or famine, homelessness, sickness, relationship problems, divorce, family arguments, trouble at work, job losses, political and religious divisions, physical disabilities, disease, 
and the death of loved ones. Some things never change, even after 2,000 years. For most of us, we can say that the past two years have felt like a lifetime. Everyone is sick of the ongoing pandemic. The masks, the vaccines, the fighting, and in some cases, it has become an outright hostile environment in our homes, our schools, our workplaces, and out in the public, even on the street. Many people are grieving the loss of a parent, a child, a friend, or a spouse. Some because of COVID and others because of cancer or other chronic illnesses. We've experienced losses of freedoms, experiences that we never got to have, future hopes, and lots of dreams. There's a real air of negativity and despair lingering nearly everywhere. One look at a dirty stable full of smelly animals and you might feel surprisingly at home. Perhaps that stable is a metaphor for how we view life right now. If that's your reality today, I've got great news. God has chosen to come to us in the stables of our lives. He meets us in the mess of our relationships, in the chaos of parenting and family life, and in the ugliness of cancer. On Christmas Eve, Jesus was born into our darkest night and our deepest pain. God came to us as a baby in a manger. And one day that baby became a man. His name was Jesus. He was a teacher, a healer, a forgiver, and friend. And God made that man, Jesus, the savior of the world. And he gave him to die on a cross for our sins. Three days later, he raised Jesus from the dead. God came to us in a stable on a cross and through an empty tomb. And he has promised to come again one day and gather us to himself. Therein lies our hope. Whatever stable or barn we find ourselves, real or imagined, whatever mess we've made of our lives, whatever injustices have been done to us, God is with us. We are not alone. The hands of heaven have reached down through a babe in a manger to give us the greatest gift of Christmas, his love, with skin on, in the person of Jesus. When it seems that everything is wrong, when all is dark and when things just stink, precisely the hours when we need them the most, the Christmas story tells us that God is there with us. And the reason is that God wants to be. God chose to be with us in the chaos and in the mess. And I think that's awfully important. God's home was no stable. God's dwelling is all the glories of heaven in the universe. But the choice was made to leave that. God chose to come seeking us. On that night of nights, heaven reached down to earth, and reaching has continued every day since. And it will continue until heaven and earth finally pass away. David Leninger also says, Will God lead us out of the stable? Perhaps, perhaps not. The promise is that even that stable will turn out to be something or someplace good for God's children. That's because he has redemptive power. God always makes something good happen out of the bad. And we might not be able to see that good for a long time, but we can count on the promise. And more than that, we can count on the certainty of God's presence throughout. There is hope, my friends. His name is Jesus. He is the single most greatest Christmas gift anyone has ever given or received. If you have him, you have everything. God bless you tonight and every night thereafter with his loving presence. 
his promise, and his peace. Amen. We're going to sing our response hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Table is ready and it is set and all are welcome. 
this table of grace, mercy, and forgiveness.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have fed us with Christ's precious body and blood, forgiven us through the sacrament, and given us a new beginning. Send us now into the world you love to share Christ's sacrificial love with all we meet. Amen. We come now to the time in our service for the um, candlelight service. And so um, we will be lighting candles. If you happen to have picked one up, now is the time to get it up. And I myself did not grab one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <right here. laughs> it's late, right? We're all tired. <laughs> I forgot to grab one. Kind of hard to light others when I can have them myself. <laughs> okay. Special instructions. With your little uh, candle here. If you're lighting off of somebody else, it's okay to tip it, but once it's lit, please try not to tip it at all because the wax will drip and you could get burnt. So just be very, very careful. All right. <laughs> Oops. The next slide. Thank you. All right. We're reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father, father's only son, full of grace and truth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace, you rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, wonderful counselor. You enlighten the heart with steadfast love. 
Enlighten your church that it might bear good tidings of great joy to all people. Blessed are you, Emmanuel, you promise to be with us even to the end of the age. Open, Open our eyes to see your presence in all who are hungry, lonely, or homeless. Blessed are you, Son of Mary, you share our humanity. Have, Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Blessed are you, Son of God, you dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Reveal, Reveal yourself to us in word and sacrament, that, that we might bear your light to all the world. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Joy to the world!